Hey, look who showed up. As if I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is another Monday. It is April 24th. Now, what we like to do on this show is we focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. In other words, I'm looking for stocks that have potential to make you money. And I am looking at every single market to find these stocks because a penny stock is nothing more than a stock that's under five bucks and they are everywhere. The stock I want to share with you today, this is ticker LRDSF. Oh boy, did I have fun researching this. I'll explain as I go along. This is Lords and Company Worldwide. What really caught my attention about this company isn't just what she does, but what she did about a year and a half ago. She made some deals that just closed here in February. So I'm thinking now is a good time to consider this company, especially since the charts just lit back up. So Lords, she finished the day at nine cents with a huge fall today of almost 18%. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better because the companies have to have their financials audited by a CPA. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. Speaking of trustworthy and transparent, they've got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Transfer agent verified and verified profile. Lots of information is being represented by these green ticks that is validated behind the scenes. So if you're thinking about getting into an OTC stock for a long hold, look for these. Now, if you're just trading it for a short swing or a day trade, you don't have to much worry about that. They also tell us that she is a shell risk. A shell risk means that she's in business, but she's not making or reporting any revenues. That's not true. It isn't. She, <laughs> she has reported revenues for the last two quarters, and it's even better than what they show. So why is it up there? I don't know, but it should be coming down. So what does this company do? Well, I'm going to read this little description, and then we're going to go get some more details. Lord & Company Worldwide is committed to becoming a leading manufacturer and distributor of premier cannabis and cannabinoid products across North America through cultivation, extraction, processing, marketing, and distribution, including branded logo apparel, catering to lifestyle, sporting, and motorcycle events. And that's pretty much what it is, is all wrapped around motorcycles and motorcycle events. But they're talking here about two types of cannabis. You've got the marijuana that has the THC, and you've got the hemp, which has the CBD. Well, back in 2020 and 2021, the company was very serious about doing both. Well, something has happened in the last couple of years. I haven't been able to put my finger on it, but they haven't moved forward very much with the legal marijuana. Though they're all over the hemp and the CBDs, but the cannabis the marijuana is on the back burner right now. So they have plans to do it. It just isn't happening yet. All right, let me show you some information I found. I got most of this information out of their most current financial, but I don't want to just hang around the financial because it's a little dry to look at. So I've grabbed excerpts of the information I want to share with you. Let me show you what I got. Now, my research in this company has been a bit interesting, to say the least. I guess you could say I started off on the wrong foot, but I finally got my bearings. I was doing a keyword search, like I always do, using company merger company dividend, company acquisition, and this PR pops up. Pack Roots announces share purchase agreement with Lords of Grasstown. Lords of Grasstown is a legal cannabis and motorcycle lifestyle brand. Uh-huh. You had me at legal cannabis. I've been investing in cannabis since 2018, and a lot of the companies are focusing in on certain niche markets, but I haven't seen any of them focusing in on the motorcycle enthusiasts. And in my personal opinion, I think there's a lot of smokers there. So I got excited and I dove right into this article. They say here that Pack Roots Cannabis Corp, ticker P-A-C-R-F, that's who this company was before all the changes came, executed a share purchase agreement with the Lords of Grasstown Holdings. Grasstown is a well-established cannabis motorcycle lifestyle brand with a tremendous following and acumen that was spawned from the vision of Tyler Hazelwood, the founder and director of Lords Gastown. And there you got a picture of Tyler looking the part, doesn't he? Motorcycles and cannabis, right? <laughs> You're looking good, Tyler. Now, I do want to point out two things in this news press that you shouldn't overlook. One, 
do not get confused by the similar names of their subsidiaries. You have Lords of Grass Town. This is their hemp and marijuana sector. Grass, right? Then you have the Lords of Gas Town. Gas is in a full tank. This is their motorcycle apparel and accessories. The other thing I want you to pay attention to, since I didn't, this is old. This came out in 2021, and I didn't see that at first. Now, I'm going to skip a piece of news here, but this is what I saw next. Pack Roots announces change of name to Lords & Company Worldwide Holdings. And I'm going, what the heck? Pack Roots, Lords & Company, uh, Lords of Gas Town, Lords of Grass Town. I was really getting confused. Then I saw the date, and it's like, what? 2021 so i rolled back here and i saw this one was 2021 as well this is when i started doing my due diligence and the first thing i found was that they had closed that grass town deal five days later that was all taken care of so i jumped into their most recent financial to get the information i needed because there you're going to get all the history of the company no need to jump around reading different news presses and filings just go to one financial the most current and you can get all the history well going back to 2019 i know it's old but this is still in effect and it's a very important deal they made a deal with Phenome One Corporation. They entered into a license agreement with them to have access to their genetic cannabis library. Now, I guess for all practical purposes, you would call Phenome a seed bank. They've got seeds for fruits, vegetables, and cannabis. And this is real important if the company wants to maintain a standardized content of their CBD in their hemp products or their marijuana products with THC. Getting the same type of seeds over and over again. And for this service, Lords is paying them 5% of their gross sales. The next deal that we have here came in 2020. This was their Rock Creek Farms joint venture. Uh, they amended it March 10th of 2021. They got 49% of it. Rock Creek is retaining 51%. And this is where they're growing all their hemp. It's about 100 acres. And they're doing something with it right now. They are taking off with it. 2023 is when they are getting excited. And speaking of that, this news here. This also relates to this year. However, it says right here, 2021, right? They tell us that this is a proposed transaction in 2021. They had signed a non-binding letter of intent for the acquisition of PNW Apparel Group. And PNW was the parent of Lords of Gastown Motorcycle. So we got a BOGO, buy one, get one, a twofer, buy one, get one free. If they get PNW, they get Lords of Grastown. Now, as I said, this was all the way back in 2021. But look at this news. Both PNW Apparel and Gastown just closed February of 2023. So you got Rock Creek that they did back in 2020. They are now kicking that up in February. These two deals have closed in February. And they just made another deal here in April. Now, the funny thing is, this is the news press that tells us about the deal but they don't announce it. It's not headline. It's not even at the top. It's all the way down here at the bottom. In the middle of a sentence, it says right there, today the company announced the acquisition of privately held GVB Biopharma. But that's not up here in the title. Here it says, Lords and Company Worldwide Holdings announces the launch of 18 new SKUs with GVB Biopharma. Well, they got into a supply agreement with them back in January, and this just makes it sound like they're continuing on with it, but they're not. They just acquired this company. GVB Biopharma was a subsidiary of 22nd Century Group. They are a leading agricultural biotechnology company dedicated to improving human health with reduced nicotine tobacco, hemp and cannabis, and hops that have advanced plant technology. Now, it is a good deal that they've made here. They are growing in this department. They've got a lot of new products on top of what they're already selling. And this isn't the only company that they've got deals with. They've got other companies they sell products with as well. They tell us here that the company is pleased to announce the launch of seven new lines of products with 18 new SKUs across multiple product categories, which include a highly effective CBD tincture, 
gummies, and soft gels. CBD bath bombs to relieve stress and anxiety. They have face serums, body lotions, soothing balms, and massage oils. Now, they tell us that this is a huge market. I mean, giant. The global health and wellness market was valued at $4.8 trillion in 2022 and is projected to reach over $7.6 trillion by 2030. That is just unbelievable. That's what COVID did. It put all of us on health alert. Now, they tell us down here some of their other lines, our line of Lord's Man Up, and lean up lines provide everyday males the supplements needed to maximize drive ambition testosterone and focus so they've got lots of products in health and nutrition they've got lots of cbd and hemp products and they've got lots of motorcycle apparel we haven't seen that yet have we you want to come on let me show you a little bit of it We've now popped on over to one of Lords' websites. This is lordsofgastown.com. This is the website where they sell their motorcycle enthusiast apparel and accessories. And they do have a wide variety of garments, folks. No way I can show them all to you, but I can give you a flavor. This is the sort of things they're carrying. Jackets, vests, shirts, hoodies, jerseys, pants. And they've got all that for women as well. Plus, they've got body suits and swimsuits for them. They've got some accessories, hats, beanies, gloves, sunglasses. They even sell knives, motorcycle helmets, exhaust systems for your motorcycles. So they've got a lot of stuff, but primarily it is set up for apparel. Now, as I said, they've got a lot here and I can't show it all to you, but I can give you a flavor. They sell a lot of leather. They sell a lot of vests and jackets both for men and women. But they've got simple apparel as well. You got your flannels, you got your cameos. Now the company is located in Canada and they do a lot of work there, but they've got other facilities in other countries as well. Let me show you. We're gonna get all this information from a presentation the company just put out about themselves. This is like a digital brochure. They tell us that Lords of Gas Town was established in 2011 in Vancouver, Canada. Their premium Lords Original line of riding gear and clothing is 100% designed, built, and hand sewn. Wow! By the company skilled team at the Lords Workshop in Vancouver. All other products are designed and made by Lords in Canada, the USA, or Nicaragua. We're going to get more information about that in just a sec. Their original brands include Lords of Gastown, <laughs> More Trees, Less Assholes, that's what it says, and Lords of Grasstown. The company is selling their products through both direct and indirect channels. They're selling directly to consumers at their retail storefronts, which they have, as well as pop-ups. And they're selling their products to other retailers at a wholesale. Now, the company is primarily an e-commerce business, doing most of everything online. They are working with cannabinoids, dietary supplements, natural health, and their branded apparel. But they're not just online. They're not just in storefronts. They are out and about. They are actually sponsoring a lot of live shows and events in Nicaragua, Mexico, Canada, the United States, and they're getting a lot of attention doing this. Now, about that facility that they've got over there in Nicaragua, they tell us here that since opening their doors in Nicaragua, they have set precedent in flexible manufacturing. As of today, their contractor has grown to over 4,500 employees, which includes over 30 years of experience in every aspect of manufacturing. Lords has the ability to adapt and stay current to new production process as defined by their ongoing flexibility and solidified their close relationships with their clients. Currently, the operation in Nicaragua has seven buildings with over 350,000 square feet of combined production space that produces over 150,000 garments a week. They are kicking butt. And Lords has warehouses. They can store over 2 million yards of fabric and trim items that cover their day-to-day -day production as well as full package operations. And they do a lot of other things as well. So the company's got a lot going on. They've got their supplements. They've got their well-being products. They've got all those hemp and CBD products. And they've got their apparel and motorcycle accessories. So they've got a lot going on. Now that we've got an idea of what the company does, let's go get some information from the OTC market about their shares and their finances. 
First thing we're going to look at over here at the OTC market is the relative volume. And she didn't do too bad today, considering she did 604,000 shares. And considering that her average is 528 shares a day, wow, she did really good today. Now, normally about now you'd hear me say this has been under the radar, but that's not the case. She's been off the market a couple times. Now, I did go do a deep dive on this. I was looking for information for why she was not selling. I didn't find anything, which isn't bad because I didn't find any bad information, no bad news presses, no bad filings, no warnings. There was nothing like that out there, but I couldn't find any other reasons either, which leads me to presume it could be administrative. They could have some paperwork from those deals they closed in February. I really don't know. All I know is she's back on the market now. Share structure for the company. Well, she's got a real decent outstanding share count, only 57 million. And they give us two numbers here for the float, 55 million <laughs> and 6.8 million. Oh, how I wish it was 6.8 million, but that's old. That comes from February of 2022. So don't trust that. But I still don't know what it is, so I did do a search on Google, and I came up with a few numbers all real close. 25 million, 26 million, 27 million. So I'm presuming that our float is somewhere in that region. Looking at her financials, well, as you recall, they say she's a shell risk, and I say she ain't, because a shell risk means you don't have any money on the books. Well, looking annually, we don't see any money on the books, right on up to November of 2021. There's November 2021, first quarter of 2022, nothing. But what's this? Money? We've got $613,000 and $919,000. Now, we know it's thousands and not hundreds because they tell us to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. Don't overlook the fact that there's a 50% increase in revenues between quarters there from 600 to 900, but it is actually better than that. This is August, 2022. Jump into their most recent financial from August, 2022. They tell us that three month period was $1.2 million in revenue, not 919,000. And the last nine months, they've done $1.9 million. And they project that by the end of the year, 2022, that is, they're going to have $2.6 million. And they have a projection for 2023 of $9 million. You're talking over 300% from where they are now. So they've got plans and they are doing things. What do their disclosures look like? Well, they actually haven't got any filings. But looking at their financials, this is the one we've been getting all of our information out of, the August 22nd financial. And then we're supposed to have one already out in November. They're late. And they've actually filed a notification of late filing. And in this, you normally get a reason for why they're late. They tell us here the majority of the annual filings have been prepared, but the company is unable to complete and file such materials as a result of delays associated with collection of the required data and documentation to complete the audit of the company and its subsidiaries. Now, filing this bought them 15 extra days. Well, we're beyond that. They filed this on the 31st and 15 days would have taken them to April 15th. We're at April 24th, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. It should come out any time now, and I'm expecting it to be bigger. I am expecting it to be a catalyst. Let's take a look at that news. Now, they got a lot of news, and we are not going to be going through it all. I got to save you some DD. So we're going to go right back here, just headlining it here. This is the last piece of news that came out in 2022. And I've highlighted things that I think are important. This is their hemp production with that Rock Creek joint venture. I told you they were kicking that off at the beginning of this year. Also told you that they had started that supply agreement with GVB Biopharma at the beginning of the year. Here on February 14th and February 7th is when they closed the deal for Gastown and PNW. Then they made some engagement deal here at Lakefront Technology, as well as an engagement with KISS Agency. And I'll be frank, I have no idea what they're about. I have not read those yet. They have launched their new website. They have again announced their delay in filing their financials. 
And then we had that piece of news where they told us they actually acquired GVB, but they were only telling us that they had gotten a lot more products. So they've got lots of news here, folks. You got the time. You should read it if you're interested in this company. They got a lot of things going on. All right, since that chart is back, let's go take a look at it. This isn't going to be fun, but it is necessary. We're going to do the best we can with what we've got here. This is ticker LRDSF, Lords & Company Worldwide Holdings. And of course, we're doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is the free trading platform you get just for signing up with TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at a three-year, one-week chart. Remembering that every bar represents an entire week of trading. This is the very first week of January 2022. She had a huge run, dynamic. She started here at about six cents and ran up to 99 cents. You're talking about almost 2,000% gains. For every $100 bill you invested down there, you'd have made almost $2,000 up there. Whew. Then she had an abrupt fall came down to a low of almost two cents and hasn't been doing hardly anything for the rest of the year. But look at this. One bar equals one week. That's right now. Look at all the volume that has come in this week. Let's take a look at that six month, four hour view. Not a lot to look at, right? Like I said, she's been off the market for a while and then back on for a little while off the market again and then back on again. So we don't have a lot of trading and I really don't know why she's been pulled off the market. But we do see she hit a high here in December of 15 cents and a low in December of three cents. Bouncing off of that low, she put herself up over top of that 50 day SMA, climbed up here to almost 11 cents and has fallen back to nine cents. But she is right here on top of her 50 day SMA. Look at our volume getting stronger and stronger and very strong today. Our oscillators, our PPO and our MACD are above the lines where they're supposed to be and gradually growing. It is ever so slight, but they're not falling. That's what's important. And our RSI, it too is climbing very gradually, but it's planed out here at about 51. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view, yeah, I kind of thought we were going to see less and less. So we don't get a whole lot here. We got four bars, four hours of trading. We were at 11 cents and right now we're at nine cents. And our oscillators are very flat on the one hour chart. God, we going to see anything on the uh, five minute? Oh yeah, we got more here than we did the hourly. So worst part I see here, she has been going sideways underneath her nine day SMA. She got through it once here. She's been through it a couple of times. Is she through it now? She is. She is on top of her nine day right now. And the volume, look, she was shy on volume at the start of the day and it got stronger and stronger through the day. I'm not saying she's on fire folks, but she is alive. She is showing heat and she's been off the market for a while. She's just come back. I think people need to find her again. This one definitely deserves some more due diligence. Absolutely. And she may need a little time. And once they start selling cannabis, I think it'll be an entirely different game. But right now with the deals they just closed, the revenues coming in and their financial that's due any time now. And we know it's going to be bigger. They've already told us that this should get a good jump. So LRDSF is one you should have on your watch list. Remember folks, due diligence is going to teach you a lot. Don't be afraid of it. I know there's a lot of it out there. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Pam 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 da 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 da